Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lorena Kaplan, and I serve as the lead for the Safe to Sleep campaign at the Eunice Kennedy Shriver National Institute of Child Health and Human Development. And it is my pleasure to welcome you to the 2020 SIDS Awareness Month Activities webinar. And I want to thank all of you for joining us today, especially because we know this is a busy time. And we all are grateful for everything that you do to continue providing services to infants and families throughout the country. So thank you. Next slide, please. Today you'll hear from me first, but in a moment I'll hand it over to my colleague, Rose Hooks, who's the Safe to Sleep Campaign Project Manager. Next slide, please. And I want to acknowledge and thank the 2020 SIDS Awareness Month planning team, which includes representatives from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Charlie's Kids Foundation, Cribs for Kids, First Candle, and NICHD. Today's webinar and all of the activities that we're planning for SIDS Awareness Month are products of true collaboration. So I want to thank my colleagues for their continued partnership. Next slide, please. We have a busy agenda for you today. You'll get to hear from most of the planning team members that I just mentioned, but we also have two guest speakers, and we're gonna tell you about a party that we're planning, and then we'll turn it over to you for your questions, and all of the panelists will be available to provide answers. Next slide, please. And now I'll turn it over to my colleague, Rose, who will tell you about how to make the most of today's webinar. Uh, just a few reminders before we begin. This meeting will be recorded. Please remember to put yourselves on mute to help with sound quality. If your phone plays music when putting a call on hold, please disconnect and rejoin when you can. Closed captioning is available and we will show you where you can find this in just a second. And we will be using the Q&A panel within the WebEx platform where you can submit your questions throughout the webinar. And we'll show you how to use this feature in just a moment. Next slide, please. If you wish to access the closed captions, go to the right side of the webinar platform and look for the multimedia viewer and click on the drop down arrow. Next slide. You can post any questions you have to the Q&A panel, which is also on the right side. Just click on the drop down arrow, type in your question and hit send. You can submit a question as we go through the presentation. We'll aim to respond to your questions in the Q&A panel or we'll respond to them at the end. Next slide, please. If you have any technical issues, please feel free to use the chat feature, which is at the bottom of the screen as shown here in the screen grab. If for any reason the chat feature becomes unavailable, you can also email one of these email addresses to our technical team. After I finish, I'll drop them into the chat feature so you can have them on hand if needed. Be sure to write them down so you don't have to scroll and look for them later. Next slide, and back to you, Marina. Thanks, Rose. And first up is our dear colleague, Carrie, from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, who will give us an overview on safe infant sleep and an introduction to Safe Sleep Snap. Carrie, you're up. Hi, everyone. I'm Carrie Cottingham, and I'm with the CDC's Division of Reproductive Health. Uh, today, I am uh, going to do what Lorena said. I'm going to provide a safe infant sleep overview, and I'm going to introduce the uh, Safe Sleep Snap activity to you. Um, next slide. Next slide. Uh, first, we are going to briefly review the American Academy of Pediatrics recommendations to reduce, reduce the risk of SIDS and other sleep-related infant deaths. And then we're going to discuss what a safe sleep environment looks like. Next, we are going to briefly introduce the safe sleep snap by discussing the who, the what, the where, the when, and the why and we're gonna show highlights from the 2019 campaign. Next slide. So let's get started with our Safe Infant Sleep Overview. Next slide. The four risk factors we are going to discuss today um, are number one, a non-supine sleep position. This means stomach and side positioning put an infant at risk. Next, the sleep, sleep surface sharing. Um, sharing any sleep surface with another adult or child also puts an infant at risk. Third, a non-firm, non-flat surface. 
This one includes two parts, the firm and the flat. Couches and other furniture are considered non-firm and put an infant at risk. So do devices such as car seats, bouncy seats, and inclined sleepers. And finally, the presence of soft and loose bedding. Any loose or soft bedding in the sleep environment can put an infant at risk. Next slide. It's also important to note um, the protective factors. Breastfeeding in a smoke-free environment are protective factors. Breastfeeding can be supported with a safe sleep environment. Next slide. So what does this all look like when we put it together? A safe and fit sleep environment includes placing your baby on his or her back for all sleep times, naps, and at night. Also using a firm, flat sleep surface, such as a mattress in a safety-approved crib covered by a fitted sheet. Keeping your baby's sleep area um, for example, the crib or the bassinet in the same room where you sleep until your baby is at least six months old is also recommended, ideally until your baby is one year old. Keeping soft bedding such as blankets, pillows, bumper pads, and soft toys out of your baby's sleep area is important. And finally, do not uh, cover your baby's head or allow your baby to get too hot. Signs your baby may be getting too hot include sweating uh, or his or her chest feeling hot. Next slide. Um, now I'm going to introduce the safe sleep snack activity. Many of you on the call probably remember this activity from last year, but we're going to go over it again for those of you that aren't familiar. Next slide. So what is the safe sleep activity? The safe sleep activity is a social media hashtag meant to flood social media with pictures um, of infants in safe sleep environments. All, um, it was in designed for all partners in the prevention of sudden unexpected infant death to participate and included all social media accounts. It was designed throughout the month of October and again, the goal was to flood social media with photos of infants in safe sleep environments. Next slide. So now let's talk about some highlights from the 2019 Safe Sleep Snap. The Safe Sleep Snap Toolkit had over 9,000 views. The webinar, webinar that many of you probably attended had 145 attendees from various organizations across the United States. More than 700 Safe Sleep Snap social media messages um, were authored by at least 350 different people. And at least 80 consumer submitted photos were shared through public profiles or partner pages. Overall, the Safe Sleep Snap activity had 2.6 million potential impressions in 2019. Next slide. As part of uh, the October efforts, the CDC uh, also produced a Safe Sleep Facebook Live event. Um, this event was filmed in one of our colleagues' nurseries um, and included a conversation about a safe sleep environment. It had over 17,217 total views with a total post reach of 51,439. There were over 800 post engagements, including more than 400 reactions, nearly 200 comments, and almost 200 shares. This is a seven minute uh, video that we recorded, and I'll put it in the chat for you to be able to access it later. So thank you for listening um, to this, and I hope I gave you a good foundation, and I'll turn it back over to Lorena. Uh, and what Carrie did not mention was that she was one of those subject matter experts, and I know that you and Sharon and um, many other folks at CDC put a lot of work into that Facebook Live event. So we're lucky to have you here today and as part of our team, and thank you for sharing that. Next slide, please. So now that we've seen that Safe Sleep Snap can be an effective way to reach those uh, priority audiences across social media platforms, I'm going to tell you how we applied lessons learned and also some of the feedback that participants from the 2019 Safe Sleep Snap activity gave to us to make this year's Safe Sleep Snap activity and the toolkit even more effective. Next slide, please. So new this year, our Safe Sleep Snap weekly theme. And that means that during uh, each of the weeks in October, we are going to focus on one theme or one key recommendation from the American Academy of Pediatrics for Safe Infant Sleep during each of those weeks. So for example, during week one, which will be October 4th to 10th, the planning partners will focus on always placing baby on his or her back to sleep for every sleep. During week two, 
will focus on placing, placing babies to sleep on a firm and flat surface, free of all soft and loose bedding. Week three will focus on sharing the room with baby, but not the bed. And week four will focus on breastfeeding to lower the risk of SIDS. And even though these are four different recommendations or themes, the one thing that ties them all together is that they all promote a safe sleep environment. So all posts that you see from NICHD and our other planning partners will include images and supporting text that show what a safe sleep environment looks like. And we invite you to participate in these themes. Now, if these themes don't make sense for your community because you're, suing, you're seeing other types of behaviors that you need to address, then by all means, we encourage you to tailor your posts. But if these agree with uh, your social media plan, then please, please join us in these things. Next slide, please. Also this year, we will continue to focus on the role that all caregivers play in practicing safe infant sleep, but we're going to give special love and attention to fathers and grandparents because we know that these two types of audiences are absolutely influential in the way um, that families practice safe sleep. Next slide, please. And to support the weekly themes, and again, the focus on dads and grandparents, we have also expanded our image gallery. So this year, you'll see more images of cute babies, more images of safe sleep environments and diverse families. We're going to feature more dads and grandparents. And also, you'll have access to a brand new album. You'll still be able to see and uh, have access to all the pictures that we used for last year, Safe Sleep Snap and that's on the NICHD Flickr page. Uh, but we've also uploaded a brand new album titled Safe to Sleep Images that you'll be able to access for this year's Safe Sleep Snap. And all of these continue to be available to you for free. Next slide, please. And again, to continue supporting uh, refreshed content, we will be providing you with new social media posts. These will include general posts about safe and sleep, but also posts that will support those weekly themes. So you'll have new posts, new images, and hopefully new inspiration for your own safe sleep snap activity. Next slide. And because we want to make sure that you're fully set up to tailor this to your needs, we are going to offer updated promotional resources, and that will include additional downloadable graphics, a downloadable and printable flyer, Additional examples of previous Safe Sleep Snap posts to help with inspiration and tailoring of your own activity, and the checklist to help with posting Safe Sleep Snap photos and content. We're also noodling in a couple new resources that we think will be fun and useful for your Safe Sleep Snap. Next slide, please. So please check back with us around mid-July, let's say, to be safe. Uh, we're working on getting all of these great resources posted to the Safe to Sleep website specifically the Safe Sleep Snap Toolkit page. And if you don't get our updates, our e-newsletters right now, we encourage you to sign up for those. Rose will tell you later on how to do that. Uh, but please expect these new resources to be available for your use in mid-July. Next slide, please. So that's uh, what we have for you in terms of the updated toolkit. But next, we have Kate Desmond's first from Charlie's Kids Foundation to tell us about influencer and user-generated content. Kate? Thank you, Lorena. Uh, as she said, my name is Kate Desmond, and I'm the Executive Director of Charlie's Kids Foundation. Uh, but I'm also a freelance writer that spent a lot of time creating user-generated uh, content for the highly shared media sites, A Simple Most and Don't Waste Your Money. Um, and so wearing my parenting humor writer hat and my product review expert hat, I'm also um, going to talk about how we can use influencers and user-generated content to promote safe sleep. Next slide. So first things first, we need to define what an influencer is for the topic of this conversation. According to Wired.com, an influencer is someone with the power to affect the buying habits or quantifiable actions of others by uploading some form of original content. Um, this is often sponsored content, and they load it up usually to social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, um, or today's hot new app, TikTok. Uh, the value of this content is derived from the perceived authority and, most importantly, the authenticity of its creator. Next slide. Any of these people look familiar? Uh, typically, influencers have a lot of followers. Brands and organizations use them to help promote products, events, and ideas. 
And most of them have one really big thing in common, and that's that they love to take pictures of themselves and post them on social media. Next slide. Okay, so now that we know what an influencer is, you might also be asking yourself, what is user-generated content, or UGC? Uh, user-generated content is exactly what it describes. It's any content that's text, video, reviews, blogs, images, created and shared by a person rather than a brand or company. Next slide. Okay, so why should we care about user-generated content and influencers? because their content is what's populating the internet right now. And according to one study, 98% of parents report that the use, they use the internet to search for information about their child's health. If this seems extreme, I would encourage you to think about the last time you had some kind of weird rash or pain in your stomach, um, and if you Googled it or asked friends about it before you called the doctor. Next slide. Not only are parents seeking advice, but they are also accidentally consuming it while scrolling social media, too. According to the Pew Research Center, 59% of all parents and 66% of mothers found parenting info while looking at social media content. A large percentage also received social or emotional support on a parenting issue, and over 30% asked parenting questions of their social media friends. Next slide. Okay, so who has seen this type of desperate uh, question on Facebook? It might start like, hi friends, my baby won't sleep, my husband and I are exhausted. Anyone have any tips or tricks for how I get my baby to sleep? I'm assuming everyone is wildly raising their hands. I'm guilty, I've written these kind of questions. Exhausted parents, especially in the middle of the night, are often turning to their online communities for information and support. Next slide. But what if parents are getting the wrong information? from their desperate social media questions. We have to consider that moms and dads might not be going to one of our websites for information and instead are going to Instagram or Facebook for answers. The other important thing to know is while many are looking for answers, a lot of them are looking for validation. They might rationalize, I know I'm not really supposed to do this, but if I can find a group of people that agrees with me on the internet, then maybe I can somehow make this um, okay. So the real question I think we need to ask ourselves as the voices of the safe sleep community is how do we get our evidence and our voices heard in a room full of really loud noise? Um, and this is where groups like one that you'll hear from next, Safe Infant Sleep, the evidence-based support group, can become really great allies uh, because they provide evidence-backed information peer-to-peer. -peer. And we definitely need more people like them in our corner. Next slide. Okay, so we need to flood social media sites with more evidence-based information, like I just said. And one way we need to do that is by utilizing user-generated content. This can be especially important during SIDS Awareness Month and a really um, fun promotion, like Safe Sleep Snap is a great place to start. If we remember back to that Pew study, over 60% of parents found parenting info on their social media feeds. And this doesn't mean that they were necessarily looking for it, but the content was put in front of them anyway. So if we get more people or influencers to post accurate safe sleep information, we can grab more of those midnight scrollers and hopefully inspire more safe, safe sleep follow through. Next slide. Okay, so if you're not yet convinced, um, consider that 93% of consumers considered user-generated content a helpful resource when making buying decisions, according to AtWeek. And Social Media Week says 87% of brands currently use user-generated content to share authentic content, believing that it helps engage their audience. The bottom line, people are listening to their online friends because they believe what they're saying is true. Next slide. Perhaps more important, UGC is more influential than other media. So the user-generated content is trusted up to 50% more than other media. And maybe even a bigger deal when it comes to safe sleep, user-generated content is 35% more memorable than other media. Next slide. So who can we look to to help us create this content? Our dear friends, the influencers. Because remember, these are individuals that have the power to affect the actions of others simply by posting some form of original content, photos, reviews, et cetera. Next slide. Okay, so let's look at a few examples of some influencers that have a pretty big following and post particularly about 
of babies and, and children. So let's just take, for example, taking care of babies right there in the middle. She has over a million followers. If she posts about a new Chick-fil-A sandwich, you might find yourself in the Chick-fil-A drive through that afternoon. Um, if Katie from Stripes and Whimsy says that this is the best bathing suit to wear post baby because it hides your belly the best, you're probably going to buy the bathing suit. By the same token, if an influencer you follow like Trina Denise tells you how to put your baby to sleep safely, you might be more likely to do it. Next slide. So how do you partner with an influencer? While many social influencers often respond to paid partnerships, some influencers may be open to posting without the request of funds. So I recommend that you start in-house. Does anyone that works for your organization have a large relevant social media following? Uh, think about who you personally follow or people that um, you work with follow or engage with online that may have a relevant following. Remember to only engage influencers that have a reputation that aligns with your safe sleep message and brand. And also consider that just because they don't have a million followers, micro influencers who have a really key niche, so um, whether that's as niche as baby sleep or um, infant care in general, um, these people can make a big impact too. Next slide. Okay, so let's say you find an influencer, your best friend's sister. She wants to help. What do you tell her? The most important thing is to make sure your influencer understands what you want them to communicate and the importance of using specific hashtags. So for the purpose of this promotion, we would want to make sure that they included a hashtag safe sleep snap. Give them the, uh, some creative freedom to engage with their audience in a way that's fresh and authentic. So it's using their own voice is really important here. And you have to trust the influencer to know what their followers and fans respond to best. Ask them if you can repost their content on your own site um, so that you can use it as another way to promote safe sleep. And if you're able, discuss compensation if necessary. So free products, sponsored contests, gift cards, cash, something like that. Next slide. So I did a quick uh, search of the hashtag safe sleep snap. Um, and I found these great examples from last year of influencers creating uh, safe sleep snap posts and sharing them with their communities. And you can see that if you just look at the likes there, that there was a lot of interest um, gained. So congratulations to the organizations that reached out and found these uh, influencers. And hopefully this October we'll see even more. Next slide, please. Okay, so how do we engage and encourage participation with our, within our own networks? I think the most important thing is to be friendly, have fun, and get creative. Um, so some things that we'll probably do at Charlie's Kids, you can see I'm wearing this T-shirt. I don't know if you can see it. But it has a lot of ideas about how to stay awake while feeding your baby. So we could send these t-shirts out with some copies of our book, encouraging influencers to wear them in their photographs, um, take pictures of themselves reading Sleep Baby Safe and Snug to their little one. Um, we might start a TikTok craze wearing these shirts in front of an empty crib where we do a dance move that's so exciting that everyone just wants to do it. Um, like I said, the most important thing is to uh, have fun, get creative, and remember that social media is social first and foremost. Next slide. So I would just encourage you to be ready by October to have the biggest impact to start now um, and engage with your online community, create some great content, post regularly, use uh, common hashtags. Think about um, hosting a guest blogger or somebody to take over your Instagram account. Um, to just really start to expand your reach. And um, like I said, whatever platform you choose, I encourage you to start now, have fun, and remember that safe sleep is relevant year round. Thanks. Great, thank you, Kate. Those were all excellent tips. We certainly will get started now with our own plan. Uh, and making the most of user-generated content is definitely one key aspect of a social media plan. And Kelly James, for from Chris for Kids will tell us a little bit about that. We will also hear from Megan and Nancy about their own successful 2019 Safe Sleep Snap activities. Kelly? You could go to the next slide. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kelly James. I'm the social media and marketing manager for Cribs for Kids. Um, before we get started, a little bit of background about our organization. Um, Cribs for Kids was founded in 1998 in response to a research study done by our Executive Director Judy Bannon and her staff at 
what was then actually an organization called SIDS of Pennsylvania here in Pittsburgh. Uh, they noticed through their extensive support uh, work with lost parents that infant mortality rates due to unsafe sleep were declining due to uh, the 1994 back to sleep messaging, but they weren't seeing any decline in underprivileged households. Um, so their study found that in these homes, all of the babies were found on couches, chairs, uh, in adult beds, and they realized during interviews with um, the mothers that they could not afford cribs and were receiving um, no safe sleep education or guidance at all. Um, the Cribs for Kids program was started to find funding for free cribs and enhanced education for these families. Um, over 20 years later, we're proud to have over 1,750 nationwide partners distributing no-cost cribs and safe sleep education to their communities through our program. Uh, we've got the National Safe Sleep Hospital Certification, the National Public Safety Initiative, the Managed Care Organization Program. Um, we just developed our Cribs for Kids at Home Program, and uh, we've got our Safe Sleep Ambassador Program as well. Um, I just wanted to say we're so happy to be a part of the Safe Sleep SNAP planning team. Um, I believe that we in the Safe Sleep community are at our most powerful when we all work together on awareness, and this campaign really highlights all of our strengths, so it's great. Please go to the next slide. Um, today I want to talk about the experience that our organization had last year during Safe Sleep Awareness Month with the Safe Sleep Snap campaign, um, how we set up the campaign, created the content, executed our ideas. One of the greatest things about this campaign is the freedom that it allows you to adapt the campaign to highlight your own organization. Um, the first thing we thought about uh, was the goals that we wanted to accomplish during the month. Uh, we love the idea of the Safe Sleep SNAP because it encourages the normalization of safe sleep. Um, this has always been so important to us. Uh, normalization equals standard practice, really, in the public eye. Um, the point of the campaign is to create a storm of safe sleep uh, photos during the month of October and to really um, try to cut through the noise that we experience online. Uh, we want these photos and conversations to be seen multiple times through uh, reposting and sharing. Um, so we really need to all work together. Uh, we also love the idea of being able to empower existing safe sleep advocates. And by existing advocates, I'm talking about moms and dads that practice safe sleep. Um, I personally am on social media for work all day, and I see women in general mommy groups try to champion safe sleep, and what normally happens is they get uh, piled on by those with opposing views. I have actually had moms tag me in comment sections to ask for help. Um, they're just drowning out there most of the time. So with this campaign, when an advocate posts a picture using the hashtag, we're all able to engage with the hashtag as well as step into the conversation with facts, links to AAP Safe Sleep Guidelines. Um, the Safe Sleep SNAP Toolkit um, provides a great question and answer um, section with evidence-based talking points. So we are empowering the advocate, the mom and dad advocate, by being there as a community to back up uh, their stance. And finally, our goal as always is to reach a larger audience um, if we are all participating, our reach can really be astronomical. The campaign's about raising awareness, and it works if we in the Safe Sleep community commit to engaging with it all together. Can you go to the next slide? Thanks. Um, at the start of any campaign that we create, it's important that we um, really work on creating a plan. So it can be as simple as creating a reminder and a checklist, to hang at your workstation or as complicated as creating a full-blown content calendar with pre-scheduled posts. As long as you're participating as often and as possible during the month, um, you're good to go. Our plan, personally, last year started with uh, developing original content that was directly related back to our campaign goals. Um, every organization has its own voice, its own audience, and its own way of communicating. So in this, uh, in the Safe Sleep Snap, you can feel free to adapt the suggestions and the toolkit to reflect your own style. Um, when creating that content, remember to use calls to action and bold language to encourage, uh, encourage participation. 
A call to action is you instructing the reader to do what you are asking right now. The beauty of this campaign is that you don't need to write a long rambling post to explain what we're doing. With short calls to action shared often, the message really does come across. Um, you can see in this post, you know, we were basically like, let's go, let's show them what a safe sleep environment looks like. Um, and we, we got a lot of traction from talking that way. Post a pic right now of your safe sleeper on your timeline with the hashtag safe sleep snap and help us normalize safe sleep across so social media. Um, it's also imperative to gather images that depict an ideal safe sleep environment. Um, a picture is worth a thousand words, especially on social media. And you could probably gather from personal experience on social media that uh, the pictures are what make you stop and engage with the post. Um, last year, we did develop the Flickr album, and this year we're um, doing an extended image gallery. So all of that is available to you. Um, as a participant, you'll be able to download those, uh, those pictures and use it, have your own library to use as you go through the month. So that's great. You'll have it right at your fingertips. You go to the next slide. Keep in mind that you can use the campaign as an opportunity to promote the work that your organization does to further safe sleep awareness in your own community. Uh, we opted to attach links to some of our um, posts last year um, to our online Safe Sleep Academy. And um, we, we used it as a, to learn more about sleep, Safe Sleep, go to here. And we would post our links, which got us a lot of traction on the Safe Sleep Academy. Um, we also asked for people to check out our Safe Sleep Ambassador program last year, and we actually got a lot of interest in that as well. Uh, so look for ways that you can combine messaging and share resources, especially with the themes this year. If you've got a, a original content about dads, about grandparents, be sure to um, include your own content and you know, promote your own organization. Um, and again, it's helpful uh, that we're um, developing a checklist of talking points. Um, so as you create your content, you'll actually have that to look to. Look to. Um, generating a checklist of ideas that you want to convey um, to support your own organization, organization's goals um, is, is really great practice as well. So if I were you, I would put the checklist up on my workstation, and as you're creating, you'll be able to uh, refer to those um, because you cannot forget to use the safe sleep snap hashtag. Um, make sure that every post that you do this October um, includes the hashtag. This will ensure that your posts are part of the larger narrative and that they can be tracked and searched. You go to the next slide. Okay, let's talk about engagement. Um, I truly believe that if we all engage with our followers and with each other throughout the month, this campaign can really, really shine. Um, this takes a concerted effort. It really does. Um, you should set time aside in each work day in October to check your notifications, review the comments on your past posts, uh, search the hashtag to look for avenues um, of conversation. And if conversations are hard to come by, let's make it a point to engage with, you, with each other on each other's post and create those conversations. Um, add engagement to your checklist, for sure. Create a list of organizations to follow throughout the month. Really prop up the people that are posting pictures of their own safe sleeper. Imagine how powerful it would be uh, to have a mom post a picture of her safe sleeper and six or seven organizations jump on her comments with even um, cla hand clapping emojis or great job. It would really empower that mom to go forward um, with her safe sleep plan and to post even more often with the hashtag. Um, I also want to stress that if this all seems overwhelming to you due to the time and resources that your organization puts towards social media, know that you can still be a vital part of the movement by just sharing and retweeting posts, um, encouraging your employees to do the same. Search the hashtag daily and just like, retweet, and share the content that you find under the hashtag. You go to the next slide. If you'll remember, um, back to the first slide, our third campaign goal was to try to reach a larger, larger audience. Um, so we really had to assess our current audience last year and also pinpoint our strengths and our weaknesses within the organization. 
So in doing so, we realized that we weren't reaching as many parents as we would like. Although we had many, the majority of our audience uh, was partners due to our heavy business-to-business -business organization model. The focus of our pages is mainly um, an information bank for our partners, and we like to communicate with our partners through social media a lot. So a strength we did point, pinpoint was our signature line of safe infant products, which we've developed even further this year with our own uh, retail site, et cetera. So this is what we knew we had to offer. We had products to offer. Can you go to the next slide? So for us, a partnership was the path forward um, so that we could amplify our message to parents. Um, we turned to Megan Rummel, she's a, an RN who founded a very active parent-to-parent evidence-based evidence safe sleep support group on Facebook. Um, we were always impressed with her group. Um, it's, it's really peer-to-peer. -peer. It's, it's moms talking to moms, dads talking to dads, um, and sometimes all night long <laughs> during, you know, uh, breastfeeding or, or while the baby won't sleep. And it's, it's just an amazing supportive group. Um, but she had the audience we really wanted to reach. So we tackled the campaign as a team last year, and we were really happy with our results. We had a ton of fun doing it. Um, I'm actually going to let Megan take it from here to introduce her emerging organization and present a case study on our partnership last year. You can go to the next slide. Thanks, Megan. Take it from here. Hey, okay, thank you. So we are with Safe Infant Sleep. We began as a Facebook group um, back in 2016, and we have spread to um, have accounts in all the different social media platforms where we um, specialize in peer-to-peer -peer support and sharing of evidence-based information. Next slide. So for last year was our first year participating in the Safe Sleep SNAP, and we partnered with Cribs for Kids who generously provided promotional prizes that we used um, to increase the Facebook group member engagement. Um, so some of the prizes included uh, wearable blankets, different versions, the Swaddlet, the Snapet, the Snoozet. And then there were two grand prizes. We um, were able to uh, gift a cribbet and also a baby shower in a box. And so we kind of saved those till the last couple weeks of the month as our grand finale prizes. Um, and then we also used Cribs for Kids promotional photos in their contest posts, and, um, and Kelly interacted with our posts as well. Um, other preparation and resources that we did to get ready for the Safe Sleep Snap, we, did, you, we attended the NICHD's webinar last year and also used their Safe Sleep Snap, Snap Toolkit. Um, so we used their post templates to get started, kind of our kickoff of the month post. And they also have a great Flickr photo album um, for safe sleep stock photos if you don't have an abundance of photos readily available at the beginning of the month. Um, we also included our team planning discussions and um, our moderator and admin uh, admin contributed images for, of our own children. And then uh, throughout the month we crowdsourced safe sleep images from our members. Next slide, please. So the results were really great, I think, for, especially for our first month or first time participating. Most of the engagement occurred within our private Facebook group. This is definitely the platform with our largest audience. Um, we have we're very close to having 80,000 members, um, but the hashtags that were used during those posts, I don't believe contribute to the overall safe sleep snap trending data when you search for those hashtags. Um, but we had uh, over 190 uh, photos, comments posted within our group, and many were on our nightly accountability threads. Uh, we had 29 individual member posts within our group. Um, and some other things that we found were when we were creating safe sleep snap posts that weren't the classic ABCs, you know, alone on their back in a crib, that gave us the opportunity to educate and um, more publicly share some of our frequently asked questions uh, that we've created. So for instance, um, you know, a nine-month-old baby that can roll over on their belly, um, even though the rest of the uh, photo meets the crib criteria, that would give us um, an opportunity to share uh, evidence-based information about rolling and how to do that, or um, if there are pacifiers in the crib. So, um, and then nearly all of our members were happy to participate and gave us uh, permission to post them on our public platforms. Next slide, please. 
So these are some examples of posts that happened within our Facebook group. So these were posts submitted by our members to the group. It is a private group, so these are not publicly available. Um, so they shared their babies in, um, in safe sleep scenarios. Next slide, please. And then we have night, nightly accountability threads um, where every night throughout the year parents share. We get at least 10 posts um, a night of babies in safe sleep scenarios. Um, and these are just some examples of the ones that occurred during the month of October. Next slide. Uh, in our Facebook group, we did have a contest um, where we asked members to post the safe sleep snaps on their own uh, channels to have those publicly available so that they would reach a wider audience than just those within our group. Uh, and these are some examples of slides um, from their own platform or from their own pages and feeds that we had them share a screenshot in our contest thread so that they would be eligible to win one of the prizes. Next slide, please. And we also, in our group and public page, we um, enjoy participating in SIDS of Illinois, uh, or Illinois um, in their monthly um, in the contest. And so we could share our own babies with them. And we were excited to share their posts uh, with us in our group. Next slide. And so our Facebook page, this is uh, public. So we, these are shareable and can reach a wider audience that are not members of our group. Um, so uh, we would receive permission from our members to share their photos publicly on our page. Next slide, please. And then again, so this was one of our um, opportunities where we took to share some of our frequently asked questions or information that members in, outside of our group may not have, like what makes a sleep surface safe? What are the standards they need to meet? Uh, so, okay, next slide. And again, we can share um, posts and include safety information along with the safe sleep snap um, hashtag. Next slide. And we are also on Instagram, which is a great platform for image sharing. So we can uh, spread those images to help normalize safe sleep while also um, spreading safe sleep information at the time. Next slide. Twitter is also a good platform. Uh, the characters are limited to 280, so it's usually short and sweet messages work the best, and you can share photos this way as well. Next slide. And Pinterest. Um, you can link the safe sleep images to safety info and other um, safe, um, safe information websites. Next slide. Okay, and so also throughout the month to increase engagement with our members, in addition to the safe sleep snap, we also held several contests, um, weekly contests throughout the month. One of them was to become a Cribs for Kids Safe Sleep Ambassador, where we registered at least 66 new ambassadors that week. Uh, we held a meme contest, which is, usually generates a lot of um, interaction and input from members. Uh, Safe Sleep Trivia Week, where we used the Google Forms quiz. We had over 550 responses. Uh, we also participated in the Dream Catchers Gamification Research app. So a couple contests around that were to um, get uh, people to register for that and play during the Sit the Dreamathon, and then attend that live stream event. Um, the wave of light, which occurs in mid-October. And also the safe sleep Snape, because um, you can't forget to have fun with this. Humor is a big interaction and draw with, um, with members, especially on social media. Next slide, please. So yeah, due to a typographical post error, uh, one, instead of the safe sleep snap, um, we had safe sleep Snape. So we had everybody um, contribute memes that they made, including uh, the character Severus Snape from the Harry Potter series. So that was another fun mini contest we thought of. Next slide. And so these are just examples of our contest rules and, um, and some posts from those. Next slide, please. So another example of how to post these contests. Next slide. And we also um, you know, received a lot of great uh, member interaction and um, appreciation for our Cribs for Kids partnership. And a lot of members would post uh, when they got their prizes in the mail. So the first picture of the baby in, um, in one of the sleepers. 
and the video posted of the baby shower in a box opening, and then the snoozette on the right. So everybody was really excited to, to get these prizes. And even if they don't have a baby that fits that age a range of prizes, it's always an excellent gift, because um, I'm sure they know somebody in their lives that is having a baby soon that would um, love to receive one of these items. So thank you so much for partnering with us on that. Next slide. And lessons learned. Um, so we do plan to increase post frequency on our public social media platforms, because I would say the majority was probably within our private group. Um, improved data collection, uh, noting down all of that, um, the numbers at the time. Um, host weekly contest again, we will do that. And amplify more safe sleep organizations by tagging and sharing their social media posts. Uh, so for people that aren't sure where to start, utilizing the NICHD's post templates and the Flickr stock photos were um, very helpful. Um, <laughs> asking uh, that getting that member user generated content, people are very uh, happy to participate. Um, humor helps and definitely collaborate with other organizations. Our group is <coughs> always ready and willing to um, amplify uh, anything that you guys have with your organization. And next slide. So thanks again um, for hosting this and, and hosting the webinar and giving us all the content to get us started and participate in the Safe Sleep Snap. Thanks, Megan. <clears throat> I'll tell you about we had so much fun um, <clears throat> partnering with you guys last year, and we hope to do it again this year. Um, I just think that uh, your group is so creative and fun, and what you do is so important with your parent-to-parent um, -parent content, for sure. Um, so our next featured guest is Nancy Mariana. She's the Executive Director of SIDS of Illinois Incorporated. She's an amazing safe sleep advocate and um, a good friend of our organization as well. Um, she's going to share her case study of her team's participation in last year's Safe Sleep Snap. Uh, thank you, Nancy. Go ahead and get started. Thanks, Kelly. Okay, next slide. <coughs> next slide. <coughs> This is just our mission and our vision, and when you, if you look at it again, you can read it. I'm not going to go over it. I want to talk kind of fast because we're getting tight on time. So, next slide. So, we kicked off the Safe Sleep Snap season after we attended the NICHD webinar. And so, we are, this is the first time we did anything like this. We've done things for um, Safe Sleep Awareness Month, but this was really a great opportunity. So. We started out with sending emails to every constituent on our mailing list in our database. And um, I did with, I'm also a registered nurse and um, I'm also a SIDS mom. And so I was sending out notices to everybody I knew who had a subsequent um, or had a new baby and um, trying to get them to get on board with our program. And so we did Facebook, Twitter, our website. We also did some on Instagram. And um, we have a Pinterest page, but we haven't looked at it for a minute, so we have to get back on that. Um, we did really encourage all of our board members to get on board and to, because it's interesting, people don't really know who they know. And so um, as we, you know, start talking with them, they're like, oh, well, I know this person. And, you know, so we kind of are able to move along with that. Okay, next. Um, so this is Antonio, and he was one of our first ones that uh, we got a photo from. And he practiced safe sleep. And this design was developed by my assistant, Lucy. And she did a super job. Um, and we had partnered also with Megan and her group. So um, it was really very much fun. Um, we did get um, permission from each parent um, via Facebook Messenger or in an email that gave us permission to use these photos. However, we don't use them. Um, they're not available you know, for the general public. Next. Um, so we ran it for four full weeks, and every single Friday we drew a name. So every time we had a picture submitted, we um, put the baby's name in a basket, and if their name didn't get pulled that week, their name stayed in the basket for the next week. So um, you can see this was our first baby with that one baby, Aiden, and he was our week one winner. And so um, our prizes were sleep sacks, sleep baby safe and snug, and then we have a T-shirt. And uh, like a onesie snap that says, alone on back in a safe crib in a smoke-free environment. So those were some of the prizes. And when um, we had some pictures of babies who were now older, but the picture was a good picture from when they were tiny. So for those kids, we made sure to send, of course, the safe sleep 
Sleep Baby Safe and Snug Book, but also other hardcover books that we had donated. Next. So we had over 50 submissions, and only less than five of them were babies that we actually knew, so that was good. Um, almost all of the photos that submitted were of safe sleep environments, but there were some, um, a number of photos that were not safe sleep, and they typically had uh, pictures of the baby was on their back, but was, you know, had a blanket or their head was covered or they had a hat on, um, you know, things like that, that we just, we really couldn't use them for that event. And so what we did was send them a note that said, you know, your baby is gorgeous and we're so happy to do this. Um, you know, we really need a picture of your baby on their back, you know, with, and, and, and kind of run down the safe sleep, you know, what we were looking for exactly. There were a few who actually resubmitted, um, but quite a few didn't. I don't, we, we were very gentle because we didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings because that certainly is not the point of it. Um, and we, it increased our Facebook sponsors by 20%, so that was pretty good. Um, and then when we had our annual appeal, many of those people responded, so that was very good um, for us because we are a small nonprofit. So next, please. So our results showed that we had, um, with our Facebook results, that we had more touched more than 20,000 people according to the data analysis. And so this is one thing that Lucy posted for our Safe Sleep Snap, and we had more than 100, uh, excuse me, 1,000 shares, and it, she still puts it in the rotation to post on our, um, on our Facebook page and on our Twitter page. Next, please. So here's some of the things that we learned. We learned that there's so much power in social media, as the other speakers have talked about. Um, we were really able to reach thousands more people than we ever had and get them talking about safe sleep. We really stressed um, the positivity and making sure that we made those mothers feel good, that make them proud of what they were doing well, because um, we wanted to keep giving them a boost, like, you know, you're doing good, mom, you got this, you know. Um, I think one of the things that I don't have written is that we really need to, need to spend more time um, reaching out to grandparents and dads and other types of caregivers. Um, typically, our audience was um, that responded were non-Hispanic white, so we really need to do better and reach out to the Latinx and the black communities, because even though we felt like we did pretty good for our first try, um, we we don't really feel like we really got to the at-risk population for Illinois. Next, please. And so this is just our contact information. Um, uh, I, I, Megan told so many things in Kelly, so there's nothing else that I, I don't want to repeat anything, but thank you so much, Lorena and Kelly and everybody from NICHD for allowing me to participate in this. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy, and thank you, Megan and Kelly. Well, as you guys can see, uh, both Megan and Nancy and all of our planning partners did an amazing job with promoting the 2019 Safe Sleep Snap activity. We know that many of you participated, and we're really grateful for everything that you've done to help promote safe sleep environments on social media. We really think that little by little, we'll be able to start influencing those social norms about the safest places uh, for babies to sleep. So now we're going to tell you about that party that we've been planning. Next slide, please. And we hope that you're ready for our party because we certainly are. Next slide, please. And the good news is that you are all invited to our Safe and Sleep social media block party. This will be a block of daily 8 to 10 minute events or parties as we're calling them during one week in October. This will be offered across various social media, media platforms. And the party hosts will share information about safe and fun sleep, cover hot topics, and answer those burning and frequently asked questions about safe and fun sleep. You are invited, all parents, caregivers, colleagues, friends, best friends, enemies, really anyone who wants to learn more about, promote, and practice safe and fun sleep is invited and should attend. We'll offer this party during the um, October 26th to October 30th, and there will be four events during that week. And we're doing this because, as Kate highlighted, and so did our uh, guest speakers, we know that folks are going to social media to get information or support um, on practicing safe and sleep. 
Sometimes this information is accurate and sometimes it isn't. And we want to be part of that discussion. We want to be supportive by sharing evidence-based real-world advice for how to keep babies safe while they sleep. Next slide, please. And we have a wonderful roster of party hosts for this event. From Charlie's Kids Foundation, we have Kate Desmond, who is one of our presenters today, and also Dr. Sam Hankey and Maura Hankey, who will host a fireside chat on the role dads can play in safe and fun sleep. From Cribs for Kids, Devin George, and also Megan Rommel, one of our speakers from the Safe and Fun Sleep Evidence-Based Evidence -based Support Facebook group, will talk about creating a safe sleep plan for caregivers, including daycares, co-parents, and grandparents during their party. From First Candle, Allison Jacobson and a colleague of hers from Man Baby will focus on the first 90 days, what every parent must know about safe and sense sleep during their party. And for NICHD Safe to Sleep campaign, I will have the privilege of co-hosting with Dr. Sahira Long, who's a pediatrician and an international board certified lactation consultant to share tips for how to practice safe and sense sleep and breastfeeding. So we certainly hope that you will attend and join us for this party. Next slide, please. And Rose is actually gonna share with us now a couple tips for how you can be active participants in these parties. Thank you, Lorena. Um, so yes, we have a few different ways that everyone can get involved. Um, we'll be releasing the full schedule soon, including dates, times, and which social media channels to join for each party. Um, to help us have a true dialogue, um, party hosts will have the opportunity to gather questions in advance. We'll keep an eye out for that. Um, and with any great party, as Lorena mentioned, the more the merrier. So as we start to promote this to the general public, um, please invite everyone in our network. And we'll, again, we'll be sure to make sure you guys get that information to help us promote. Um, the dialogue won't just be happening in the live video between the hosts and the guest, guest speakers but also in the comments. It's a great chance to share your safe infant sleep tips or any resources that you may have from your various organizations. And just with that in mind, we welcome all engagements, likes, comments, and definitely shares. Um, the more that we can share the video, the live version or the recorded version, the more we can reach um, various parents and caregivers. Um, and when you join us um, we, for each party, we each enter each party with the tone of encouragement and support for everybody um, and kindness as well. Next slide. So um, we're starting to get closer to the end of the webinar, and I know we've been giving a ton of information to you guys, uh, but don't worry. In addition to posting the recording of this webinar, we will provide another opportunity to connect with us again in mid-September. The exact date will be announced soon, but this will be an opportunity to have a refresh before SIDS Awareness Month begins, including an overview of the toolkit resources, another opportunity to ask questions, and various tips about and reminders to make the most of your participation during the month. Next slide. As mentioned throughout the webinar, we will be sending key updates as we continue to plan and prepare for October. If you registered for the webinar, you will be on a list to receive those updates. I also highly recommend that you tune in in a few different ways uh, to make sure that you don't miss any of the updates, because if you're like me, your inbox gets really crazy. Um, if you haven't already, please visit the Safe to Sleep campaign website, and on the home page at the top towards the right, you'll see um, a box uh, to add your email address to sign up for those e-updates. Um, and then you'll also get not only information about SIDS Awareness Month, but also other information about safe and sleep, so it's a great resource. Um, definitely be sure to follow all the planning team um, social media accounts listed here. And last but not least, be sure to follow the main hashtags that we'll be using to plan and promote, as shown on the screen here as well. Next slide. Thank you, Rose. Well, that concludes the first portion of our agenda, but now we want to open it up to you, our participants, to ask questions, and the panelists will be available to provide answers. So please don't be shy. Feel free to use the Q&A panel, which um, Rose, I think, is going to give us a refresher on how to do that. Next slide, Next slide. Okay, great. So I see a lot of you have been um, using the Q&A panel, which has been awesome. Thank you. And this is just on the screen here in case you need a reminder and you've had some questions. 
Um, they've been rolling in. We've been um, responding to some of them during the webinar as we've been having our presentations. But I just want to make sure um, that we've captured as many as possible. So I'm just skimming through. Um, one question that keeps um, popping up, there's a great question. Everyone's asking if we will be making the slides available. Um, we will be posting the recorded version of the webinar. Um, but I also want to make note that we will be updating the toolkit with various resources that we're speaking, speaking about here. So even if you don't have the hard files of the PowerPoint presentation, you'll get these resources and reminders throughout the toolkit and future communication. So again, definitely make sure you're signed up for all the different ways to stay in touch and you'll be able to get that information moving forward. Let's see here. So someone asked, um, at what age would we not want to accept photos? So Lorena, do you have any thoughts on an age range that we should, should have for photos, or is it the more the merrier? What are your thoughts there? Yeah, thanks, Rose. So the American Academy of Pediatrics offers safe and sensitive recommendations for babies up to age one. And uh, we know that as old babies get older, they start to roll over on their own. Uh, they start to crawl out of cribs. So some of the recommendations may not apply to babies who are beyond one year of age, uh, or certainly if they're more mobile. Uh, but we invite you to make the activity as inclusive as possible. Um, we want everyone to feel welcome to participate, including folks uh, who speak other languages. So if you have the ability to tailor the activity uh, to include other languages, we invite you to do that, please. This is a, a come one, come all type of activity. Um, and in terms of um, up, up to what age would we not want to accept photos, that is entirely up to you. But again, the recommendations do uh, go up to one year of age. Great. Thank you, Lorena. Um, another question I'm seeing here. Um, regarding if there are photos of babies in the contest that are, are not portraying safe infant sleep, how do you, do you address this? So do you want me to take this one or do you want to take it? Sure, go for it, Rose. Okay. Um, so we recommend that this is a, a great opportunity for an educational moment. Um, so many of our previous um, participants have held contests. Uh, they use this as an opportunity to send a direct message to that individual. Um, kindly letting them know um, that about the reason why it's not a safe and sleep environment and sending them some resources like a link um, to the, um, for more information and then encouraging them to you know, look through that and see if they can um, reattempt having the photo for safe and sleep. So just reaching out to that person kindly um, in a separate direct message or an email is probably the best way to go. Okay. So another question I see here, um, questions related about um, addressing various communities, including the black community. Um, I will quickly answer that and say um, in our various photo albums in Flickr, we have a variety of images that um, focus various uh, minorities and ethnicities that are available. So that also includes photos of the African American community, um, and that's something that's available for, for people to use. Um, anyone want to add anything else to that question about other resources for minority or um, diverse populations in terms of resources? Um, this is Nancy. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, uh, one of the things that we do in the Chicago area is participate in the, like the consortium meetings that they have in the different communities, and when we go, we, of course, bring materials, but we, a lot of it is incentivized. And so I usually bring a few cribettes and then, you know, whatever else I've got to give out to make sure that everybody gets the message. And then I always want everybody, every single attendee, to walk away with something, whether it's a book or a T-shirt, and then, you know, the big prize of a couple of cribettes. Um, but we sign up as much as we can for any activities that are in the communities that we're looking to serve. Um, working with the aldermen, um, you know, working with the black clubs. We have a lot of black clubs in the city. So that's kind of how we try to reach out to our families. Great. 
Thank you, Nancy. I and, appreciate um, that. This is, Kel- this is Kelly with Cribs for Kids. Um, I think Nancy's correct. You know, it's about your organization reaching out to the, those communities. Um, but I also wanted to mention that Cribs for Kids, all of our education that's online, we also have available in Spanish. Um, you can access that on our website. So if you are dealing uh, with a Latino population, um, we have uh, even down to our products, you know, we have the Cribette with the, the ABC message in Spanish. We've got all of our education translated as well. So if you need anything like that, you know, feel free to reach out to Cribs for Kids. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, Kelly. Kelly. And uh, I know the Safe to Sea campaign at NICHD uh, for the past six months asked um, you, our audience, uh, about languages and the needs in your community in terms of what else should we be offering, what other languages should we um, be offering uh, to your communities. And uh, we received your uh, suggestions and submissions, so we'll be um, exploring how to expand our language uh, or the languages that we offer the Safe to Sleep um, materials in, but uh, please stay tuned for that. For now, um, as with anything else, we invite you to tailor this activity to provide it in different languages, and that also goes for images. Um, the galleries that we offer for your use uh, do include uh, more diverse images this year. That's something that we learned from last year. Uh, but if you have images that you would like to include from your own gallery, please feel free to use those. And I also see a question in there for Kate. Yes. Kate, I can, I'm not sure, do you see the question or do you want me to read it out for you? Might be on mute, Kate. Okay, yes. Uh, the there one is. regarding have I ever had experience calling out influencers? Is that the question we're yes. talking about? Yes, um, yes. thank you. Yes and no. <laughs> um, as an organization, we do like to call out images when we see that those that are unsafe. Uh, we've had pretty good success calling out companies. Um, one example I can think of specifically, Keurig did a commercial a couple years back, and we called them out and told them that their images were unsafe, and they almost immediately changed. Uh, their commercial and um, included safe sleep images instead. Um, as far as individuals, it's tricky, um, as you probably all know. Um, it doesn't keep us silent. We keep trying. Um, but I can't say we have had a influencer that suddenly became a safe sleep advocate if they weren't before. Yet. I'll say yet because I have high hopes. Great. I love, I love the high hopes. I'm right there with you. Thank you, Kate. Um, I see a question about getting more information about the Safe Infant Sleep social media block party, including dates and, and all those details. Yes, we will be providing that information um, probably within the next month or so. Um, we'll have a complete party, block party roster. we will have the dates, times, where to go to tune in, and so forth. So definitely keep an eye out for that. And a reminder that the party hashtag is hashtag safe sleep party. So make sure you're following that as well to get updates um, in real time. Let's see. I see a question about um, if the baby's wearing a bow, should we not include in the photo campaign? So um, anything that's added to baby, especially if it has elastic or if it can be wrapped around anything, and I assume um, if it's like a bow that ties like a headband type thing, that could serve as a choking hazard uh, or a strangulation hazard, so that would not be recommended. If it's a bow that attaches to the baby's head, um, it's just an extra item in the crib that's not needed while baby's sleeping. So um, I think the recommendation from AAP is uh, to set up a really beautiful environment for baby that's free of all soft items, loose items, and bedding, which would include bows. Thank you, Lorena. Um, let's see what other question do we have here? Sorry, just one second. Um, So this is a question about um, the organization isn't fully focused on babies or safety. Um, so social media includes a lot of different events and posts. Is there a way that 
Um, this person can engage their community off social media as well in case the posts get lost. So yeah, so um, if any of our partner or you know, presenters here, if you have any suggestions about how to engage your audiences off social media, um, feel free to chime in if you like. Hi, I'm Kelly from Crib. Um, it's Hi. difficult now because of coronavirus. So my first thought was, you know, events are great. You know, you know, normally we have um, we sponsor a walk in the fall that's canceled. We sponsor uh, Women of Achievement Awards canceled. So it's really difficult at this time to um, to sort of you know, meet with people in, in person and really do an event that would be worth it. But um, people are having success transferring their events to a Zoom call event. So you might want to meet with your team and think about what you can do um, over Zoom and invite people that way. But it does seem like for the time being, almost everything's you know, going to be online. I went to a, a Zoom fourth birthday party yesterday, and it was like tons of fun. So, you know, think of an event team and um, get the word out to your community that you'd like for them to join in. Um, and it could be, you know, anything. I know that Charlie's Kids holds like a really fun trivia night, but that could definitely be done um, over Zoom. So that would be something to think about. Um, you know, take the party to uh, a different, you know, venue and do a Zoom call, and, and during, you know, that party, that Zoom party, you can always promote uh, what your organization wants to promote, um, safe space, whatever else you're, you're looking to promote. So think about that. Great. Thank you, Kelly. And I saw a question about in-bed sleepers. Do we have any guidance for how mm -hmm. to um, make those safer? Uh, just a, a note, currently in-bed sleepers, uh, some others call them co-sleepers, are not a product that is regulated by the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Therefore, um, I believe right now there is still not sufficient evidence to recommend for or against using that product, and it's not something um, that we promote as a safe sleep environment as of right now. So we do not have any guidance for how to make that a safer or less risky sleep environment. Um, um, hi, another question Liz. that keeps coming. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry, I was responding to Liza's email about, or the message from Rebecca Eastman about how she should go about contacting the family. Can I answer that? Please. Oh, okay. Um, so one of the things that we do is we send out, um, every month we send out a birthday card and an anniversary card. It's very simple just to let the family know we're thinking about them. And we actually get calls back from people or emails. So, you know, we try to call. Uh, so initially what we do is we send out a, a gift, uh, excuse me, a bereavement package. And I'm happy to share that with you, um, Rebecca, if you want to contact me, you can see what we're doing. But um, we send that out, and then we send out cards, um, the first birthday, first anniversary, the first Mother's Day, Father's Day, um, holidays, things like that. We try three times um, to call them, and if they request it, we don't do cold calls, they have to request it. But if they request um, a, uh, to talk to somebody, then, you know, we call them. Otherwise, we just reach out with cards and stuff if we don't connect with them by phone. So. I'm happy to share with you what we use as well. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I see a question about um, do we partner with different organizations in different states? One example being Be More for Healthy Babies. I believe they were a participant in last year's Safe Sleep Snaps, um, and we are always more and more than happy and excited to uh, bring new partnerships to the table. So absolutely, we do partner with organizations outside of the um, organizations that are represented here today, um, and we welcome new ones. So. Um, Please always reach out to us if you have an idea for how to spread the message of safe and sleep. Thank you, Lorena. Um, another question we have here, are there organizations that donate items that um, safe, safely sleep organizations can receive? Anyone have any suggestions here? In Illinois, we um, 
we do participate, like we partner with the health departments and local organizations that do um, care for mother baby, and we provide them with, um, of not, it's a limited amount, but of the 20 t-shirts of sleep sacks or wearable blankets, um, you know, and other little things, pens and stuff like that. So. And then um, Cribs for Kids as well, we do have um, a donation budget. Um, and we've got, uh, you know, product as well as um, education um, available to our partners. So if um, you are a partner of Cribs for Kids, you can inquire about, um, you know, we do, do a, a bit of donation and we also advise our partners on fundraisers um, that they can, they can do in order to afford more products for their own organization. So, um, yeah, reach out to um, us at Cribs for Kids. We might be able to talk about uh, a donation. Thanks. Thank you. Great. I see a question um, on pacifiers um, and which should be excluded from the Safe Sleep Snap picture. Um, I think regarding pacifiers, uh, the American Academy of Pediatrics notes that they uh, do reduce the risk of SIDS and should be introduced um, among breastfeeding infants only after breastfeeding as well established. Uh, and if an infant is not breastfeeding, they can be introduced as soon uh, as desirable. Now, in terms of the safety of these, we really look to the Consumer Product Safety Commission for guidance, so be sure to check out their website to see if any uh, of these products have been recalled recently. I think my general understanding is that one-piece pacifiers that don't have any stuffed animals or any strings or anything else attached to the actual uh, plastic piece are preferred. That way there is less chance of suffocation, uh, strangulation, or choking. Thank you, Melina. Um, there's also been a couple of questions about um, you know, not smoking around the baby for safe dip and sleep, and I think folks are looking for any guidance on how to approach that messaging. Not sure if someone wants to take that answer. Okay, maybe we'll circle back to that. Someone asked, uh, do any crib or portable manufacturers print the ABCs of Safe Sleep right on the crib? I believe that is right up Cribs for Kids Alley. Yeah, our crib at uh, unit, that is the pattern that we use, um, is the ABCs of Safe Sleep. So our goal with our product is to educate as well as um, offer a safety, you know, product. So everything that we are doing through Cribs for Kids and through etc.com is offering products that also have the message. And, um, you know, it was designed that way uh, because we're thinking about caregivers, not necessarily the parents. But like, for instance, our Snap at Onesie has the ABCs on the front of the snap at one day and on the back it says, turn me over. <laughs> so, you know, if you left your baby with a babysitter or at daycare and they were wearing that, it's like a visual reminder for the caregiver that you have a safe sleep plan um, and that you're following that and sort of a reminder for them to get on board as well. Um, so, yes, the Cribet has the ABCs. Um, a lot of our, you know, snap and the sleeper that um, Megan showed earlier in a photo is the little, the little um, pattern there is actually ABC, you know, I put me to sleep on my back. So, um, yeah, I mean, check out etc.com. We just um, started uh, a subsidiary company that is prof for profit, and it is, um, it's etc.com. You could go there, you could shop, and the nice thing about shopping at etc.com is that 100% of the profits go towards uh, putting more babies into cribs. So um, if you are going to a baby shower and you're looking for an item or you want to introduce Safe Sleep to the mom at the baby shower, there are a ton of items, uh, Baby Shower in the Box with Safe Sleep Survival Kit, on and on, or even just a little snap at Wednesday that, that's got the messaging on it. 
Um, and everything shipped with um, our education as well. So um, yeah, if you're, if you're a partner, you can access a lot of those, those items on our partner portal on, our, on the Cribs for Kids, Kids website. And if you're not a partner and you're just looking to you know, spread safe sleep, definitely check out etcetera.com and take a look at the safe sleep items we've got there. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, there's a question here. Is there any effort to reach out to specifically to um, child care centers and Head Starts? Um, anyone want to jump in and take that answer? Have anything they want to share? Hi, it's Kelly again. Um, we are actually in the process of developing um, a child care certification. So look for that in um, 2021. We're working really hard on that um, at the organization. So if you know anything about Cribs for Kids, you know that we do the National um, Safe Sleep Hospital Certification um, run by Devin George, uh, RN, it, at our organization. And what this is is we award, um, we award uh, safe sleep um, certification for hospitals that are practicing, that are doing best practices in safe sleep. So they have to apply with Devin, um, our education and outreach coordinator, and they go through a process. They have to educate all of their nurses. Um, gold level on it is actually having cribettes there to give to moms that don't have a safe sleep, sleep space. It's a really interesting program, and um, we're currently working on adapting that program to do the same thing for child care centers um, is something we're really excited about. And obviously, it's, it's so needed. Um, the majority of these unfortunate deaths, the infant mortalities are happening when the mother's not with the baby and the baby's in the care of somebody else. So it is something that we're working on. Um, and if anybody has anything to contribute, please reach out to us um, as, as we work on um, getting the program together. You know, if any ideas, would love to hear. Kelly, um, Kelly, one of the things yeah. we did in Illinois is we had a, a law passed. It's unfunded mandate, but that all child care providers must have um, safe sleep education every three years to obtain and maintain their licensure through Department of Children and Family Services. And we also had a law passed that all hospitals, birthing hospitals, and hospitals that care for children birth to age one must provide verbal and written safe sleep education prior to discharge. So both unfunded mandates, you know, unfunded mandates. But. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing, Nancy. Thanks. Thank you both. Um, I see another question. Uh, any, or actually to comment, any baby-friendly facility will not be able to post pictures with pacifiers or any artificial nipples. Um, I believe that's correct, but also I think the uh, latest uh, guidelines uh, allow for education on the use of pacifiers as a SIDS risk reduction measure, so long as it is part of a comprehensive um, education uh, with that particular mom or family uh, about how to best use that pacifier and also how to promote breastfeeding, if appropriate for that infant. So. Um, that's the good news. We can do both um, to get the best outcomes for babies and families. Um, we're, I want to make sure this that we get Kate to, from uh, Charlie. Uh, go for it. I was just going to yeah. say this is Kate from Charlie's kids because we ran into that with baby-friendly hospitals um, first, giving us some pushback regarding our book, Sleep Baby Safe and Snug, which has images of pacifiers in it. Um, and they were became comfortable with it after we included the verbiage, like once breastfeeding is established. Um, so I do think that there's room for both, as you said. Great. Uh, another question uh, talked about, do we address um, or going to the harm reduction space when it comes to bed sharing? Um, for the Safe to Sleep campaign, we strictly and exclusively follow the guidelines set forth by AAP for safe infant sleep. Um, it is impossible to know the individual situation of a family who's considering bed sharing. Of course, AAP, as you know, says, um, bed sharing is not recommended because it increases the risk of SIDS and other sleep-related causes of infant death. Their latest recommendations from 2016 do offer guidance for what to do if a parent accidentally falls asleep with a baby after feeding or comforting, and that is that after that caregiver wakes up um, to place the baby back in their own safe infant sleep space as soon as possible, and also that if there's any chance that the parent will 
fall asleep while uh, feeding or comforting that baby on an adult bed, that um, it is recommended that parent plan ahead or a helper help them to plan ahead by clearing all soft bedding and all uh, items that could be cushiony um, from the adult bed in case that parent falls asleep. But the uh, gold standard is still to try to stay awake um, and uh, move baby to his or her own sleep space as soon as that parent is ready to go to bed. Um, Any other questions? We have three minutes, so if you have burning questions, please offer them now. Um, know that this is not the last opportunity to engage with uh, us, all the panelists. Um, we will be posting updates and this recorded webinar to the Safe to Sleep site, our, uh, our 2020 Safe Sleep Snap Toolkit page. Um, you're more than welcome to email any and all of us with additional questions. Um, and I think um, Rose was going to give us a uh, quick reminder about a webinar that we'll be hosting in September. Yeah, so as I um, mentioned earlier, we'll have a refresher webinar in mid-September. Um, so that again will be an opportunity to ask any questions, get a refresh or overview of all the toolkit resources for this year. Um, and also we'll be able to share a few tips um, and, and resources to help make sure that your activities are a success. Thank you. Okay, to my dear panelists, are there any last comments you would like to make? Okay, sounds good. Well, next slide, please. I think that concludes today's webinar, but before, before we part ways, I just want to take a, a, a minute to thank my co-presenter. Thank you so much for uh, sharing great information today about your activities and your programs and resources, um, as well as the SIDS Awareness Month planning team. Uh, it's really a pleasure and privilege to work with you. I would like to thank our guest speakers, uh, Megan and Nancy, for sharing great tips about how to make Safe Sleep Snap fun, creative, and how to encourage families to practice safe and sleep. I'd like to thank my colleague, Rose Hooks, uh, and the Palladian team for all the great work that they've done to support this webinar and all our activities, and our colleagues, Liza Cook and Liz Cushman at Booz Allen Hamilton, who handled today's um, technical aspect of the webinar. And finally, to all of you for joining us today, thank you again. Please be safe, be well, and we hope to see you in the fall.